Hello there YouTube, FlightGuy1997 here. Well, maybe I'm a bit too young for you guys. <laughs> well, according to my comments on my video on area navigation, you guys wanted to see some VOR to VR type flying, so off we go. So here we are again this week with another Mastering Virtual Aviation video. For this video we will be covering VR to VR navigation. If you saw the first Mastering Aviation video, you saw how RNAV was a great modern navigation method, but today we're going to be taking a look at some of the older methods. Let's say you're flying something like this, or this. Obviously a GPS may not be readily available and you may have to revert to some old school techniques for flying the virtual skies. So what the doohickey is a VOR? So the long and short of it is a VOR is an omnidirectional VHF signal initially meant for short range navigation. VORs can be found on your sectional charts such as this. As you can see, the Joliet VOR here is shown in a blue marking with a compass rose surrounding the VOR station. To tune to the Joliet VOR, simply tune your NAV1 or NAV2 radio to the proper frequency. To ensure proper tuning, check the Morse code provided on the sectional with the audible signal from your navigation radio. If you cannot receive a signal, maybe this diagram will help. For the sake of simplicity, one can see as altitude increases, so does range. Because of Earth's curvature, much like comm radios, you will not receive the VHF signal from low altitude and long distance combinations. Okay you guys, welcome over to the simulator here. We are currently situated on a heading of 130 degrees and 3500 feet in straight and level flight. I'm currently proceeding direct to the Joliet VOR. For the sake of simplicity, I have plugged in a direct two-way point on the GPS just so you can see a visual representation of our location relative to the VOR. So to start off here, the first thing we're going to want to do is tune to the VOR frequency, which for the case of this, this is 112.30. Go ahead, switch that over to the active, and you can see our uh, NAV1 OBS just kind of jumped around there. That means that we can tell that something tuned in but we don't really know exactly what it is yet but we'll come back to that in a minute so I'm now gonna rotate the OBS dial around until we get the line oriented along the middle of the ball in the middle of the OBS and what we're basically trying to do is discover what radio that we are currently located on and it looks like it's gonna be about 150 degrees give or take a couple so that means that we are situated on a 150 inbound course, you can see that with the upwards facing triangle that we are going to the VOR on a 150 radial. Now to confirm our uh, actual tuning of the uh, radio, we're going to want to head over to our radio panel, turn on our nav one clicker. And also there's a small little button on just to the left of the tuner. And you can hear if we pull that, it gives us a nice little Morse code. So we can go ahead and push that back in, put everything back to normal, and we'll just continue flying along this heading inbound to the VOR and try to track this uh, 150 radial as best as we can. Other than that, I'm going to switch back over to a different scenario and we can see what else we can do with the VORs. Okay you guys, so we are now heading back in direct to the Juliet VR as we were before, but this time I'm going to fly a specified radial. In this case, I'll make it 120 degrees inbound to the VOR. So to get myself coordinated with this uh, radial inbound to the station, you can see our middle vertical line is all the way over to the right, and that means that we are essentially to the left of the radial. So we're going to turn to the south here and make that turn uh, and basically maneuver so that we can get oriented along the 120 radial, which will be to the south of our current position. You can see we have that vertical line, which that basically tells us our lateral relativity to a radial that we have plugged in. 
So if it's to the right, that means you're essentially to the left, and if it's to the left, you're to the right. It's kind of like following a localizer. It's that sort of concept. You also can see there's a middle bar, which that basically can be used for glide slopes and stuff like that. That's really the only actual application it's used for. So not really so useful for VR navigation. So you can see here, as we get closer and closer to the radial, we're going to start a left turn inbound to intercept that 120 radial. And then from there, we can continue flying direct inbound to the station. So obviously, you guys, there's a lot more to VR navigation than just flying with uh, these, I guess you can call them, inbound radials, outbound radials, all that good stuff. They can also be used for approaches and finding out a specific pinpointed location if you needed to use two VRs to reference to one single location in the sky. That's all for this week's video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more content on VR navigation, I have put links below in the description. Be sure to follow me on Twitch, like on Facebook, and subscribe here on YouTube. Until next week, happy landings.